the city of Sydney, spanning 1,800 square kilometers and with a population of 4.5 million people. It is Australia's largest city. It is hard to imagine that it has been just over 200 years since the first fleet first arrived in Sydney. In only a few generations, humans have completely altered the environment around them. The natural homes of native birds, mammals and reptiles once flourished for life here, but now they are disappearing fast. In New South Wales alone, over 300 species has been listed by the New South Wales Wildlife Atlas as threatened or endangered in some way. Many birds and mammals require the hollows in trees to nest or breed in. Tree hollows can only form in trees after hundreds of years of growth. In Sydney, however, most of the old trees have been cleared due to deforestation or to make way for new houses. Many species are now forced to compete for these few remaining locations. In the 1860s, a new competitor was introduced to Australia. Introduced from India, this new bird also prefers to nest in tree hollows. Since its introduction, it has been so successful that it is now placing even further strain on the native wildlife. It's the Indian Miner. The Indian Miner was first introduced to Australia most likely in an attempt to reduce the insect numbers around crops. Only a few pairs were originally released, but they have been so successful that they are now one of the most common birds in Sydney. The Indian miners are highly advantageous and they will feed on anything they can find. In the suburbs of Sydney, however, they never really have to look far for a meal. So why are these birds such an issue to the native wildlife? To find out, we travelled out to visit Gary Kunick, who is the founder of IndianMinerEradication.com. Well, the first problem with Indian miners is there's too many of them. And because there's so many of them, and they like to breed, they take over the hollows that our native birds and marsupials need to live and to breed in. Now, when Indian miners arrive in an area where we've got Australian native birds like, say, the Sulphur Crested Cock 2, they end up like this one, stuffed. They lose their, lose their homes. If they do have a hollow, if they find one that they can breed in, the Indian miners will come back and they will chase them away. If they've got eggs, they'll throw the eggs out of the nest. If they've got young, they'll throw them out onto the ground. Or they might be kind and leave them in the nest and build one on top of them. So with an abundant food resource and the ability to secure nesting locations from the native wildlife, the population of the Indian miners has increased significantly. Similar scenes are unfolding across many of the Pacific Islands. The Indian miners are now the most abundant birds found on many islands including Hawaii and New Zealand. In Hawaii, the Indian miner has been responsible for the dispersal of the weed lantana. They are also destroying the eggs of the wedge tail shearwater. So what is being done to control these pests? Eradication of the Indian miners has so far been the most successful method. Gary Kunick has developed his own trap specifically designed for the Indian miners. These traps are now distributed around New South Wales and have caught over 300,000 Indian miners. This is the miner X Indian miner and starling trap, uh, effectively for the people who get it in a three part trap. They come into the foyer through here, they have to bend their knees and they have to push through at the end of that entrance. Once they've done that, they are then able to climb up through the top and drop down to where the food and water is. 
In an article published in March 2011, Katie Lowe and fellow researchers investigated if the Indian miners were in fact competing with the native birds. Their results showed that the Indian miners were often choosing to nest in artificial locations rather than in tree hollows. They suggest that instead of focusing on trapping them, more effort should be spent on trying to increase the native bird populations. People say we shouldn't be catching them. There is no other way to preserve the native birds and marsupials, apart from breeding native birds and marsupials in zoos and places like that. And I don't want my, my grandchildren or great-grandchildren to have to go to a zoo to see a rainbow lorikeet, for example. Uh, or, any, or a kookaburra, uh, or, or a, a possum. Perhaps with combined efforts, the next generation of birds can have a brighter future.